Hello everyone. Today I'll be demonstrating how to analyze and quantify nighttime radiance and cloud cover values for a portion of the United States. And in this case, I'm looking at uh, the Pacific Northwest, Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. Uh, we'll be using a lot of raster uh, tools, and a lot of them can be found in the raster functions pane and also in the geoprocessing tools. To get to the raster functions pane, you simply go to imagery and in the analysis box here, raster functions pulls up this pane here. The thing I really like about this is that you can create temporary layers using these tools. There are equivalents to a lot of these in the geoprocessing toolboxes, but those actually create data. It's easier to manipulate these, so I'll expound upon that a little later. So I have here some VIRS satellite data. That's the Visible Infrared Imaging Radiometer Suite. Uh, which has a day-night band that uh, captures the data we're interested in, the light emissions at night. And specifically, the product I have is from the NASA Earth Data website, and it's the VNP46A1 product, the daily gridded day-night band of 500 meter spatial resolution. And it has 26 data sets, but we're most interested in the sensor radiance field, and the cloud mask flags, which I'll show you how to extract the actual cloud cover layers. So we have two data sets downloaded already that I've already gotten. I won't get into why it has to do with how the products package, probably how the satellite orbits, but I'll be stitching these two together to uh, encompass the three states. And to do that, we need to create a mosaic. And that is how you stitch raster uh, data sets together the most efficiently. So in raster functions here under the data management menu, there's a mosaic rasters icon. And I really love these uh, artistic icons too. You click on it and simply, we will do this twice, simply input the cloud mask layers first and also choose an operation that's not blend. If you choose blend, it's going to create uh, it's going to mess up the perimeter here. It's going to cut off, chop off some edges, and we don't want that. So choose anything but blend. And after a few seconds, we've got a combined image right over top. And I'm going to rename this. This is a, a messy name. These are the clouds, so I should call it March 1 Clouds. And I forgot to mention, this is imagery from March 1st, 2020. So click on it again, repeat the procedure for the radiance. Just add these two to the queue here. Choose the mean operation and create a new layer. And once again, these are temporary layers that are not in our geo database yet. I will rename this one as well. March one, let's call it radiance. So this is the radiance. We'll mess with the symbology later. I want to first focus on the cloud. So this looks a little off, and that's because the uh, sensor is not just picking up the clouds that you see in the sky. There's a few more odds and ends to it. And actually, to show you that, we have the user guide. I have the user guide pulled up here for this particular product. And we see in table four here the exact data set we've added. It is encoded in 11 bits. And we are most interested in bits six and seven. That is the confidence of detecting clouds from clearest to cloudiest. And so how do we extract that? How do we uh, visualize that in ArcGIS? Well, back in data management, raster functions, transpose bits. That is the last one in data management. And we input our raster. We're using the March 1 clouds right now. Keep everything else the same. A bit pattern. Now, Landsat 8 has this and does this to a lot more of their products. We need to do user defined because we are not dealing with Landsat imagery. Recall that we had six and seven as the bits that we are interested in. And this is gonna output a raster where it only includes six and seven in a two bit file, so to speak. So we'll create a new layer. And speaking of uh, these, these bitwise things, this data is 16-bit uh, unsigned, which means we have values, integers only, from 0 to about 65,000, about 2 to the 16th power. So look at this. We now have uh, values from 0 to 3. 
black is no clouds and white is clouds. Pretty, pretty clear there. Uh, we're going to go one step further, though. We want to just get the absolute most confident cloud, because as you recall, there were a few tiers of confidence level. Um, there are several ways to do this. You can um, use a mathematical function. You can use raster calculator. I think in this case, since we're dealing with only a couple of numbers, we should use remap. So remap function within raster. Uh, the raster pane. So select the variable or select the raster we just created, which is temporary. And to get the a binary variable where it's no clouds versus clouds, we want zero to three to output a zero and three to three to output one. Now this may seem a little weird. Three is not inclusive in this maximum, so we're really getting zero to 2.99999. And three to three is just gonna get three. Um, so you'll see here, we'll create yet another layer, another temporary layer. And here it is, it looks very similar, but as I toggle it, you might be able to notice there's a few specks here and they're gone. Those are the semi-confident clouds. So that just shows you a few tools, a few data management tools. Um, so now I think we're ready. We've got the clouds. We now want to put it into our geo database so that we can ultimately create an attribute table. And that's how we want to quantify it. Uh, the question I would be most interested in is what percentage of the area is being covered by clouds? I think that's useful. So head to the geo processing uh, pane. If you don't have it open on the side here, you just go to analysis and tools right below the analysis word, and that will open your toolboxes. Data management is where we're headed once again. Um, the raster submenu, and then the raster processing menu and clip raster. So this again will create a permanent file. We want to have the remapped, the latest iteration of our clouds, which appears here. On the extent, it will depend on what you're looking at. I have a shape file for the Northwestern states. And output, I'm just gonna make this a simple name. I'll call it March 1 Clouds again. It doesn't matter if it's the same name because this is actually going into the computer, the database. Uh, make sure, ensure that you select uh, both of these. They are uh, dealing with the clipping geometry and the clipping extent, and we want it to be clipped exactly to the shape of Washington, Oregon, Idaho. We don't want anything like anything like this, any weird polygons. We want it geometrically correct. So let's now, we are no longer interested in our old temporary layers. Let's just remove them from the content pane. And and I guess we can also remove the old imagery that we were we had first loaded from the website. So here it is, three states and there are the cloud coverages. So awesome. So one more step I wanna do is to build an attribute table to be able to determine, okay, how many pixels are zero, how many are one. So we're still in the data management area. As you can see, we're still in data management tools move on down to raster except this time choose the raster properties submenu and build raster attribute table this will just create a structure for the um the now permanently inputted geo process uh, geo database file it'll add a structure to build a raster attribute table so the main thing this does is uh it changes it from a discrete to, or changes it from a continuous uh, visualization to a discrete uh, zero and one specifically. Colors don't matter here. One last time, go to data management and attribute table. Now this is where it actually populates with the zero and one histogram. So input that latest iteration of our clouds and create new layer, it will, instantly create something. It's identical. However, when you right click here, an attribute table option pulls up and look at that. You've got your zeros and ones and the count of pixels. 
So as you can see, there's more zeros than ones. Um, that means there's more area that is cloudless, which is good for this type of analysis. And recall that this is 500 meters per pixel approximately uh, in area, 500 meters squared. So multiply that by this, that's your real area. And I've already estimated the percentage, it's about 36%. So about 36% cloud cover here. And that that is all we'll do with the clouds. I'll change this uh, to a black and white symbology so that it's less alien looking. And to do that, just click on the value here. It'll take you to the symbology pane. Pretty straightforward stuff. Great. So here is our final cloud uh, analysis, our final cloud process. So let's now look at radiance. Radiance, we won't do as much fancy stuff because we already have the data there essentially. Uh, once again, we need to clip. And so that is again, raster, raster processing, clip the raster. We're clipping the radiance to our extent of the Northwestern states to the clipping geometry of those states. And we want to rename it March 1 Radiance for uh, clarity. Um, we have our clipped Radiance. We're gonna go directly to that building attribute part again. Um, back down to raster properties submenu and the build raster attribute table. So this time we're not just going to be looking at zeros versus ones. We're actually going to look and see, okay, how many radiance values of one, two, three, et cetera, up to 2,679. And I also forgot to mention the radiance values here are measured in nanowatts per centimeter squared per steradian. And that's a fancy way of saying how much wattage from each square centimeter of the surface. And we have to incorporate the viewing angle. Uh, that the optical portion of the satellite's uh, looking at. So that's why the steradian is there. And there's about uh, four pi steradians in a sphere, if that gives any context. So just think of it as light bouncing off a surface, and that's uh, what's being detected by the satellite at that angle. So what do we just do? We just built the raster attribute table, and like before, attribute table in the data management section of raster functions. Radiance, the latest iteration of it. Instantly we'll create a new layer. It's identical, but it has the attribute table designation. So we'll just look at this real quick. And like I said, zero, et cetera, this is how many pixels have no radiance value, only one nanowatt per centimeter squared per steradian two, three. So that's neat. We did an identical thing for uh, both clouds and radiance now. I'm going to remove a couple of these on uh, temporary layers. Everything we need is in our geo database and these attribute titles are linked to all of that. Another question I'm interested in, and this we'll do before we wrap up, is detecting how much is in rural areas versus urban areas. And to do that, we're going to calculate a few zonal statistics. Um, I have a couple of rasterized feature layers already. I have this urban area one mile buffer zone. And what we'll do is, is geoprocess zonal statistics. And to do that, we have to go to a different toolbox. Spatial analyst toolbox, a very popular one I know. Zonal and zonal statistics as table, the very last tool in this toolbox. So this will give that frequency distribution like you saw, but it'll do it based on just the urban areas and it'll give some summary statistics. So you'll see in a second what that looks like. Our feature zone data is this rasterized urban area and our um, input value raster, the one with the radiance is radiance. I'm going to name the output table something a little more friendly. Let's call it rad urban. And statistics type, whatever is at your discretion, I'm going to include all so you can see. You might find uh, one is more effective than the other. But we'll run this real quick. It updates 
real quick. And now we have a standalone table at the bottom here. And open it and voila, we've got summary statistics. So to interpret this, this is the radiance statistics for urban areas. There are 297,000 pixels in said urban areas. Again, some useful information. You can see the maximum is 2679, which makes sense that the urban areas would have the brightest lights. Uh, this is important, the mean, any central tendency measure, the median is nine. And again, this is nanowatts per centimeter squared per star radian. The sum is also important if you're comparing day by day. Uh, so what this is about 10 million nanowatts total for the entire region. And this is for urban areas only. We can do the same exact thing for the rural areas. I have a rural area feature class, which is rasterized. It must be rasterized to do the zonal statistics if you're using raster input values. And raster or rural area is simply the opposite of urban areas. It's simply they're inverses. They were cut and clipped from each other. Let's call this one rural. And let's just go for it. We have another table. It's now the rural area. And all right, so we can see some similar information here. Upon brief survey, there are a lot more pixels that make sense. Look at all this area that's not city, especially Eastern Oregon. That's a pretty area in the winter. Uh, we've got about 2.97 average in the rural areas, median of three. So this is a pretty normally distributed range as opposed to urban, which again, about 37 nanowatts per squared centimeter per steradian. So this is good. This is useful information to compare. Obviously, there's more lights in the urban areas. Uh, but again, this is a, a useful analysis for for over time. Temporal maps could be made uh, to, to illustrate this information. So that's going to wrap it up for this. Uh, one last thing, actually, I'll show you. Uh, my preference for a color scheme for nighttime radiation, nighttime lights, is the Inferno color scheme. I like the dark purple at the bottom and then the bright yellow at the top. And get that out of there. All right, so this is it. I keep the gamma at one and I stretch it to standard deviation so that it is more um, strict, if you will, with the very dark values. So if I increase this to eight, it's gonna have less yellow. It's going to be more strict as to what it deems yellow, but two is fine. That's a, a normal mathematical value. And one last thing, I keep lying. Here's one more thing I want to do for a visualization purpose is I want to put clouds over the top here. And what I'll do is I'll add a transparency to it. Um, there we go. That's it. I will make it about 80% transparent. And that way you can see more clearly which areas were affected by light or by clouds. And Southeast Idaho fell victim to that. And that is why it looks so blurry in the radiance layer, as opposed to Seattle, the metro area, where the pixels look a lot sharper if you zoom in. A lot sharper there as opposed to Idaho. You can see it looks like uh, you're taking pictures of distant worlds. So that there, I promise that wraps it up. That shows you how to uh, quantify and to visualize nighttime radiance. And you could do that with the uh, VIRS satellite data I did or anything else that provides nighttime radiance. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching.